सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द माइकोलॉजी माइकोलॉजी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज अ स्टडी ऑफ द फंगस एंड इन द माइकोसिस वी यूजली टॉक अबाउट द अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक माइकोसिस एंड वी टॉक अबाउट द सिस्टमिक माइकोसिस नाउ वॉट डज इट मीन अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक और सिस्टमिक अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक मीन्स वेन एवर द पेशेंट वेन एवर द फंगस विल बी हैविंग द चांस टू इन्फेक्ट द ह्यूमन बॉडी ओके दे विल बी शोइंग देर इफेक्ट्स सो दोज पर्टिकुलर फंगस दे विल बी कॉजिंग द इन्फेक्शन इन द सिस्टमिक माइकोसिस दे विल बी प्रेजेंट इन साइड द ब्लड सर्कुलेशन एंड दे विल बी कॉजिंग द इन्फेक्शन टू द बॉडी ओके सो मेनली द अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक इन्फेक्शन दे विल बी अफेक्टिंग द ह्यूमन बॉडी वेन एवर द पेशेंट आर इन द इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज स्टेट इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज स्टेट मीन्स इम्यून सिस्टम ऑफ दोज पर्सन आर नॉट वर्किंग वेल दैट्स वाई दे आर कॉलिंग वी आर कॉलिंग दैम एज अपॉर्चुनिस्टिक mycosis whenever they will be getting the opportunity to infect the human body they will be infecting that and whenever they will be getting the opportunity whenever the patient's immune system is not working fine okay so about the mycosis we usually talk about opportunistic mycosis and we generally talk about which mycosis systemic, systemic mycosis right now it is very very clear systemic means blood circulation right now if you talk about opportunistic one <clears throat> okay we are having some kind of category for example uh, yeast okay we generally talk about the yeast in the fungus and if you talk about the yeast we are talking about <clears throat> cryptococcus neoformans okay crypto cryptococcus neoformans then there are some yeast like fungus okay yeast like fungus and in the yeast like fungus we generally talk about <coughs> candida okay you must have heard about candida albicans right and pneumocystis now pneumocystis carini or carini or pneumocystis gerovici okay these two fungus can be considered under the category of yeast like okay candida candida albicans and then pneumocystis carini or gerovici okay <coughs> after that we are having mold <coughs> okay after that we are having mold and in mold we generally talk about muker okay we generally talk about muker we talk about rhizopus okay we talk about apsida okay and we can talk about the aspergillus okay <clears throat> aspergillus this is the basic classification for the opportunistic mycosis <coughs> okay fine so that is the thing about the opportunistic that is the thing about the opportunistic mycosis now in the systemic one okay in the systemic one they are having the dimorphic nature in the systemic one we are having dimorphic nature okay dimorphic nature now what does it mean dimorphic nature <coughs> dimorphic nature means uh, at some temperature they can act like yeast and at some temperature they can act like mold okay so sometimes they can act like yeast and sometimes they can act like mold that's why we are calling that as dimorphic nature dimorphic nature is usually seen in systemic fungus which will be the topic which will be the topic of discussion in the next class for the next class okay and for the dimorphic nature which kind of fungus we can talk about so you can talk about histoplasmosis okay you can talk about sporotrichosis you may talk about blastomycosis okay you may talk about coccidiomycosis okay then we may talk about para coccidiomycosis 
and that finally we can talk about panicillosis <clears throat> okay so histoplasmosis prototrichosis blastomycosis coccidiomycosis paracoccidiomycosis and panicillosis how you may remember this thing <clears throat> like it works for me there is bank in india which is hsbc bank okay so h for histoplasmosis s for spirotrochosis trichosis b for blastomycosis c for coccidiomycosis just add p over there p for para coccidiomycosis and penicillosis okay they are having the dimorphic nature at some temperature they can act like yeast at some temperature they can act like, act like mold right that's why we are calling them a dimorphic nature and systemic these are the part of the systemic fungus these types of fungus will be discussed in the next class not in today's one okay so this is the systemic fungus today we are going to talk about the opportunistic mycosis or opportunistic fungus so we are going to talk about the cryptococcus neoformans then candida about the pneumocystic carini and gyrovaceae about the mucorrhizopus apsida and the aspergillus okay so let's start our discussion with starting with the candida over here <clears throat> okay so first one over here will be candida okay now for the candida if you talk about <coughs> what is the etiological factor for the candida <coughs> that is candida albicans okay <coughs> candida albicans now about the <coughs> candida albicans uh, talking about the risk factors over here those patients who are uh, having the problem with the immunity so immunocompromised patients are having the more risk of getting the uh, candida albicans so immunocompromised patient okay immunocompromised patient and second thing the patients who are taking the admission in the hospital and mainly the patients who are taking the admission in ICU intensive care unit so admission in the icu icu admissions are uh, usually they may have because these kind of patients they are already having the weak immunity that's why they're going to the uh, icu so immunocompromised patients are having more chances of getting the candida fine now if you talk about candida we usually talk about two phenomenon okay and these are very very important very very high yield so let's talk about those two phenomenon over here so which kind of phenomena I'm talking about? So first of all, <clears throat> there's a phenomena which called as Reynold broad phenomena. Okay. Reynold broad phenomenon. <clears throat> now in the Reynold broad phenomenon, what happens usually is that <clears throat> there is the germ tube formation. okay germ tube formation we'll be talking about this thing in the image also i will be showing you the image as well in the last of the <clears throat> class then germ tube we are also calling that that as germ tube test okay so germ tube test can be considered as one of the diagnostic approach for <clears throat> confirming your diagnosis about the candida okay so germ tube formation can be seen in the renault broad phenomenon germ tube test okay can be taken as uh, one of the criteria for diagnosing the candida albicans then next we are having the chlamydospore formation what chlamydo chlamydospore formation <clears throat> okay chlamydospore formation in the chlamydospore formation what you will be seeing over here <clears throat> you know i told you candida is called as yeast like Okay, candida is having the category as yeast like now they are having some budding okay you know budding yeast okay yeah so they are having the budding with pseudo hyphae so that budding with pseudo hyphae appearance will be given by the candida and that formation is called as chlamydospore so here we can write then these kind of patient will be having the budding with pseudo hyphae appearance budding with pseudo hyphae Okay, budding with pseudo hyphae. So that is the chlamydospore formation. <clears throat> okay, so these two things. One more thing, <clears throat> this germ tube formation will be seen over here 
Jumpty formation which means Reynolds broad phenomenon will be seen over here at body temperature. At body temperature. What is the body temperature? 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. And this one, this clamidospore formation can be seen at 20 degree Celsius. Okay. So remember about this thing as well. Okay. So clamidospore formation will be seen in the 20 degree Celsius temperature at 20 degree Celsius temperature and Reynolds broad phenomenon will be seen at body temperature or 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now there are two time, there are two kinds of host. There are two kinds of host for this kind of patient. There are two kinds of patient uh, for this uh, fungus or the candida. One is the immunocompetent, which means immunocompetent means they can be the healthy patient. So immunocompetent means their immune system is competing, right? So it is able to fight with the infection. On the other side, we are having the immunocompromised. Immunocompromised, what does it mean? lower immunity okay so we are having these two kinds of host so let's see what kind of problems can be appearing in these particular cases okay so shall i rub this one let's talk about that over here so <clears throat> one category is immunocompetent right immunocompetent host Okay, <clears throat> among all the opportunistic among all the opportunistic mycoses or the fungus, candida is the very very important fungus. Okay, most of the question comes from the candida albicans. If you are talking about the opportunistic mycoses, so in the opportun in the immunocompetent host, we are talking about the. Have you heard about candidiasis? Candidiasis that will be having the oral thrush. Okay, so here the patient may be having the oral candidiasis oral candidiasis and in the oral candidiasis we are talking about oral thrush okay oral thrush in the patient what does it mean oral thrush you know <clears throat> in the oral cavity and on the tongue they are having the white plaques they're having what white plaques. i will show you the image later on they're in the white plaques and with the tongue depressor you know tongue depressor Dentist, they are having usually tongue depressor to check the oral cavity usually whenever you are visiting the dentist. So with the tongue depressor, you can remove that whitish plaque from the tongue. It is removable. So, you know, we are having some other kinds of condition looking similarly to this oral thrush. How can you differentiate that this patient is having oral candidiasis or this patient may have some other problem? For example, uh, they may have oral hairy leukoplakia. Okay, that image also I will be showing you. In the oral leukoplakia also, the patient will be having whitish kind of patches on the tongue. But that kind of patch will not be able to scrap off from the tongue. Okay, And if you are able to scrap off that particular whitish kind of uh, thing, that means it is the candida. If you are not able to do that, that means it is something else. Okay, So oral thrush will be seeing in the oral candidiasis. Second thing over here which you can appreciate will be the candidal intertrigo. Now intertrigo means between the <coughs> body parts for an example you know between these fingers between these fingers this candida may accumulate over here okay that is called a candida intertrigo one more example between the toes between the toes between the first or second second or third or third or fourth they can accumulate over there so that is the intertrigo between the body spaces okay so that is the candida inter intertrigo next thing <coughs> The patient may have the vulvovaginitis mainly in the females. Vulvovaginitis. Now, in the vulvovaginitis, what will be the finding? That is very important. So, finding over here will be that will be the cottage cheese drainage. Cottage cheese or curd like drainage. Curd like whitish drainage from the vagina. Okay, cottage cheese or curd like vaginal drainage okay vulvovaginitis that is also the part of bacterial vaginosis okay so which bacteria also uh, which fungus if you talk about uh, for the vulvovaginitis that is the candida okay so candida can cause the vulvovaginitis and mainly cottage cheese or curdish whitish discharge can be seen from the vagina in these patients okay so that is from the immunocompetent host 
which means they can be fine they can be looking fine their immune system is working fine but still they may have this much problems from the candida side now let's talk about the immunocompromised patients okay immunocompromised patients <coughs> so second situation is about the immunocompromised patients Immunocompromised patient means simply their immunity is not working well. Okay. Now in these cases, what will be happening? So first of all, esophagitis. What is esophagitis? Inflammation of this esophagus. How you can determine? By the help of endoscopy. By the help of endoscopy, you will be looking for the esophagus. There will be the whitish plaque deposited on the wall of the esophagus. I will be showing you the image as well later on. Okay whitish kind of plaque will be deposited on the wall of the esophagus on the endoscopy you can uh, see that kind of image okay so esophagitis will be there so whitish plaque will be seen whitish plaque on esophagus on endoscopy okay fine next thing which you can determine over here that is the invasive Okay, invasive or disseminated candidiasis. And in this kind of problem, okay, the patient usually are having the fever, headache and all these things. Okay, <clears throat> so that is the invasive or disseminated candidiasis. <clears throat> Okay, that was a, that was about the immunocompetent and that was about the immunocompromised patients. What will be happening? What candida can do uh, in cases of immunocompromised patient? Now, how can you diagnose such patients? Okay, for the diagnosis, you will be <coughs> checking for what? Renault broad phenomenon. That was germ tube test. Second thing, chlamydospore formation. That was what? Yes, but it was pseudo hyphae appearance. Okay, so these two things you may check in the patient if the patient is having candida or not. Okay, what can be the treatment for such patients? So treatment for such patients will be, we are talking about fungus. So we should give what? Antifungals, right? <coughs> Antifungal drugs or antifungals and we can give over here azoles. Azoles for an example, fluconazole. <coughs> Okay, clotrimoxazole. So this kind of image uh, azole we can give. Further, we can give amphotericin B. <coughs> amphotericin B. Okay, these drugs can be given in the patients who are having the candida. Okay, <coughs> amphotericin B or azole. So one more thing. <coughs> You can differentiate two kinds of things over here. One kind of infection is the mucocutaneous, which means topical infection. Okay, on the mucous membranes only. They are involved in the mucous membranes. One is the thing where the candida is involving the <coughs> systemic circulation. So in those cases, look, whenever there is a T cell deficiency in the patient, whenever there is T cell deficiency in the patient, that will cause the mucocutaneous candidiasis. Whenever there is T cell deficiency, that will cause what? mucocutaneous mucocutaneous or topical candidiasis and whenever the patient is having neutropenia neutropenia means what <coughs> so neutropenia is deficiency of neutrophils whenever the patient is having neutropenia in those cases the patients might be suffering from systemic candidiasis which means candida candida is present in the blood circulation which one is more dangerous <clears throat> of course systemic because that is present in the blood circulation and it can go anywhere with the blood circulation okay fine so that is about the <clears throat> that is about the topical and uh, systemic uh, candidiasis fine <clears throat> now candidiasis can be appeared in the normal flora only normal flora what does it mean 
it is actually protecting you normal flora is actually 60 percent of normal flora is present inside your oral cavity <coughs> in your saliva and all these things now <coughs> in these cases whenever the patients are on steroids okay steroids these patients may have higher chances of getting the candida <coughs> okay as i said this these are the opportunistic mycosis so they will be finding the opportunity to infect your body so if you're talking if you're taking steroids you are decreasing your flora over there if you're decreasing the flora inside your oral cavity candida can develop over there and can cause what can cause oral <coughs> thrush over there okay so that was one of the example so that was about the candida now let's move on to the <coughs> one more fungus let's talk about the cryptococcus neoformans okay cryptococcus neoformans So the second one is the Cryptococcus neoformans. <coughs> so Cryptococcus neoformans, I told you this is typically <coughs> yeast, right? They will be finding, they, you will be finding them in soil and pigeon droppings. Okay, pigeon droppings or feces of the pigeon. Okay, they typically find, they can be typically found in the pigeon feces, pigeon droppings or soil. Root of transmission to you will be aerosol transmission. Aerosol means with the help of air, right? So the person might inhale this fungus with the help of the air. Okay, and from the air, where it will be going? Into the lungs okay so once it will be coming into the lungs so from the aerosol transmission it will be coming into the lungs from the lungs it will be going hematogenous spread will be happening over there <coughs> which is spread hematogenous spread hematogenous spread means from the lungs it will go into the blood circulation from the blood circulation it will be going into the brain it will travel to the brain hematogenous spread will be there and it will be traveling to the brain and in the brain it may involve your meninges what are your meninges <coughs> dura mater pia mater arachnoid mater these are your meninges right inflammation of the meninges are called as meningitis so they can cause what they can cause so from the lungs it can travel to brain and it can infect your meninges and it can in cause the inflammation of those meninges and that can cause what meningitis meningitis which of the patients which kind of patient should be avoided from this cryptococcus neoformis because what what thing i'm talking about over here from this to this this i'm talking about the neurotropism this property is called as neurotropism okay hiv patient hiv patient must be aware of about the cryptococcus neoformis because in these kind of patients very quickly neurotropism may happen okay so question comes like that most common cause of meningitis in hiv patient most common cause of meningitis in hiv patient cryptococcus neoformis okay cryptococcus neoformis so in the hiv patient what happens is in the hiv patient most common cause is most common cause is neoformance, cryptococcus neoformance. It is it will be finding in the pigeon droppings. Okay, mainly aerosol transmission, neurotropism will be happening. Most common cause of meningitis in the HIV patient will be cryptococcus neoformance, cryptococcus neoformance. Right. Now talking about the <coughs> risk factors, HIV patient first of all immunocompromised patients. Okay, the lung disorders patient because hematogenous spread might happen right this, this these will be the risk factors moving further about the lab diagnosis about the studies okay <clears throat> so for the cryptococcus shall i rub this one well, let's talk here <coughs> so about the cryptococcus neoformans Let's talk about the lab diagnosis over here. 
okay what you can find okay about the lab diagnosis so look you know this kind of uh, yeast i'm talking about the yeast over there if you will if you will be looking over there they are having the capsule first of all okay and over the capsule they are having the antigens so let's say this is the structure of the cryptococcus neoformans they are having the capsules they are having what antigens over there on antigens on the surface okay they are having the antigen on the surface and to diagnose okay to diagnose these are the antigens now we can try one test in the labs which can detect these antigens and the name of this test is latex agglutination test what the name of the test latex agglutination test okay now in the latex agglutination test what will be happening they will be finding what they will be finding these antigens okay antigens that that are present over the cryptococcus neoformans okay next thing which we can do over here we can check the csf we can check the csf i told you the patient is having what meningitis the patient may have meningitis so you may check the csf levels okay and in the csf level usually what you will be finding glucose levels will be decreasing glucose level will be decreasing in these kind of persons okay and neutrophils count may go high neutrophils count may go high next thing you will be doing the ct or mri of the brain ct or mri of brain in the ct or mri of the brain you will be coming to know you will come across that this patient may have the soap bubble lesions soap soap bubble kind of lesions will be seen okay soap bubble lesion <clears throat> okay so in this patient soap bubble lesions can be seen over the ct or mri one more thing there is one kind of special staining we call it as indian ink stain okay indian ink stain or indian ink staining this is one of the kind of negative staining so indian ink stain okay indian ink staining in the indian ink staining this is the negative staining why i am calling that as negative because okay with the help of background of the staining we come to know that what kind of problem is happening for an example in this particular case the background will be appeared black the background will be appearing black but this capsule of the cryptococcus they will be appearing whitish okay so hello kind of appearance what kind of appearance h a l o hello kind of appearance what is hello kind of appearance in the vehicles usually you know headlights what kind of appearance they are uh, looking look background will be blackish in the night if you are walking if some car is walking towards you okay what will be happening the headlights will be coming to yeah so you know background will be black and you will be seeing those lights only this is the hello's kind of appearance this kind of appearance will be seen over here whenever you are going for indian ink staining okay so background will be white sorry black background will be black blackish and they will be giving the hello appearance brightish appearance okay understood so how many kind of test lab agglut lab ag uh, sorry latex agglutination test for the antigens indenting staining for the hello appearance for this structure they will be appearing a uh, brighter hello appearance csf low glucose more neutrophils ct or mri of the brain so bubble lesions can be appreciated over there okay we'll be talking about the images of all these things okay how it looks then after that let's talk about the treatment okay so up for the treatment the drug of choice for such patients is management of this patient so drug of choice is amphotericin b with amphotericin b with flu cytosin okay this is the drug of choice in cases of cryptococcus neoformans amphotericin b with flu cytosin this is the drug of choice in the patients who are having the cryptococcus neoformans okay amphotericin b with flu cytosin 
आफ्टर दैट यू मे कंटिन्यू विद फ्लूकोनाजोल फ्लूकोनाजोल बट दैट विल बी फॉर द प्रोफेल एक्सिस पर्पज ओके फॉर द प्रिवेंशन पर्पज बट द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस विल बी एम्फोटेसिन बी विद फ्लूसाइटोसिन दिस कॉम्बिनेशन ओके दैट इज अबाउट द क्रिप्टोकोकस नियोफॉर्मेंस so till now we have talked about the candida we have talked about the cryptococcus neoformans okay